I've had a chance to fly in space three times, and to be able to pull your nose to the window and, and see the world is what every astronaut wants to do. And my first two flights were just on the space shuttle, but my third time, I wasn't just visiting space, I was actually living on the International Space Station. And the International Space Station has this big bulging cupola window facing down towards the world. So to be able to pull yourself through the space station, come down and around and down into the cupola and pull yourself into like, like sticking your head into this glass dome that is facing the world and to be able to then see the world, not just through a window, but in all directions, to look forward and look backward and look to the sides and look straight down. It is like having a glass bottom spaceship and, and you can see the world with a clarity. You can look ahead to what's coming and, and get your camera ready and you can see so much of the world directly below you. Initially you see the world for what you know but afterwards it starts to surprise you and later on it teaches you so much about the world and, and you stop looking for things that you know and you're just starting letting yourself be surprised by the wonder and the enormity and the constantly changing beauty of it. It's, it's an incredible place to get to know our planet. When you first fly in space, you, you're pulled to things you recognize out the window, naturally. You want to see places you've been or places you know. Um, but the, the next time around the world, it's, you know, you're looking for something else. And the next time, you're looking in more detail. And so your perception of the world becomes more complete. It, doesn't, it isn't some sort of strange atlas where you've done a push pin for every place that you've been to. Now, in fact, those don't matter at all. And it's the entirety and the connected nature of the world that you feel. You've, you truly start to see the world for what it is, which is one completely connected place. One ball with this uh, beautifully varied but completely joined surface uh, that we are just one part of. And, and you, the, the honesty of it is hard to gather when you live on the surface, but the, the true nature of it is something that, uh, that you truly get a sense of after a while living on a spaceship. On board a spaceship, you are compelled to take photographs. You just, you try not to. You try and go to the window and just say, I'm not going to take any pictures today. I'm just going to look outside. But within a second, you're, the things are going by so fast, you grab the camera because you don't have time to properly process what you're looking at. It, it goes by so quickly. So the result of that is after six months in space, you've taken a whole tranche of pictures. In my case, I took about 45,000 pictures. And then I wanted to put them into a book that, that uh, I could show people. You can't put 45,000 pictures in a book. You can't really even put 1,000 pictures in a book. You know, 150 is about right. And so I, I went through all 45,000 and I, I kind of filtered out the ones that were good pictures. And that was a few thousand. And then I thought, what if I took my, my best buddy Russ up to space with me? What would I want to show them? Or, or, or if I took one of my kids up and they were at the window next to me, um, what part of the world would I want them to see? And that's what I started using as my filter for the pictures. What would I want to show a friend if the two of us were by the window of the spaceship? And what would I tell them? And so I started going, well, I've already got 10 pictures of the Bahamas. Okay, I don't need any more pictures of the Bahamas. I wanted to see the whole world and then um, I want to tell them about in the Bahamas the tongue of the ocean and the shallowness of the reefs and the beautiful sculpted detail that you can see uh, and, and just as if uh, I was noses pressed to the glass with a friend on board the space station. One of the beauties of having flown in space three times is uh, I really absorb the richness of it, the, the uniqueness of it, the privilege of it. And the views are forever permanently seared in my head. I know what the world looks like. I can drive on a road now someplace I've never been and go, hey, I know what's coming around the corner because I, I've seen it from orbit. I know the, the cut of the bay or the slope of the rock. And uh, I don't miss it now because it's really just sort of helped define who I am. I, I don't miss being two years old although that was really an important phase of my life. I don't miss being 18, although that really helped shape who I am now as well. It's not so much missing things that have happened in the past as uh, allowing them to have improved my understanding so that I can appreciate the things that, that exist for me now. Space travel to this point has been very hard. It's been very dangerous. And it's really just been the purview of large organizations like governments. Uh, our commercial spaceflight for satellites started going private a while ago because if, if a satellite 
doesn't make it to space. It's, it's sad, but it's not tragic. But for people to fly in space, it's still only governments that have launched them. But we're almost at the cusp now where maybe a private person could buy a ticket from a private company and just start with the space experience. What Sir Richard Branson is trying to do is lob people up just to the bottom of space, get a few minutes weightlessness, take a few pictures, and fall to Earth again. Sort of like bouncing on a, on a trampoline just to get, get you know, that initial look of what's over the hill. And it's, it's by no means what it's going to eventually be, but someone has to start somewhere. And I'm all for it. I think the more people that can truly see the world for what it is, that, that can really understand um, the importance of seeing not just your local region, but seeing all of it being connected, uh, I think people that, that have seen that are forever incapable of making a selfish local decision. They're much more liable to make a global decision. So I think it's healthy for all of us to have that expanded perspective.